Um, so this is just a run cycle that I came up with of, of him to, to start off the whole test. He's a, as I said, he's a really fun, fun critter to use. He's got great proportions, really cool rig. He's awesome. And um, so my idea with the test was to have him run on screen. Actually, I put him on a path and had him running around. And then um, he does a jump, lands, and then he looks around. So let me get this out here. That's my line in the background there for you guys to see my screen save. So this is um, a blocking pass, just to show you guys what my idea was for the test. Actually, I think. Here he comes in, run, jump, land, look right, look left. He's kind of happy, look left, look right, that's it. Okay, so um, that's the basic idea for the test. And you can tell um, there are no textures here, it's just me animating away. And I think all the ideas are, are working okay, but um, there's a lot you could do to make it feel a little bit better. I do want to take a second to talk about polish also, um, as this lecture should be also about kind of the last nits and pieces that you put on your shot. And when it comes to creatures, I think polishing creature animation is all about making your stuff feel as organic and connected as possible. So what that means is trying to do things like making, you know, when, when he's rotating his body here, making those shoulders feel like they're really pushing off and um, that there's there's overlap happening in the chest. All the little parts of his body should just feel as natural as possible. You can get into fingers and toes and all those fun things. So it really is a matter of when you're dealing with you know, animals and creatures to just make it feel as loose and organic as possible. And a lot of times it is adding overlap or also I really like to run a pass where I'm just exaggerating things. I'm pushing things just slightly. So at the end there, for instance, the jump at the, at the end is a little slow. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. Um, and then here is a slightly more polished scene. Oh, thanks, Roberto. So uh, a good example of areas where this test could improve are the exit. You know, watch how the exit, he just feels kind of um, slow. He doesn't feel like there's any real pop to his motion. And in through here, there isn't much overlap with the, his body. Everything just stops and feels very sticky. It just feels like it hits a pose and stops. So the next pass I'm going to show you guys is the final pass. And then this is just adding the beautiful textures that we have with Dozer and then animating him in Viewport 2.0, setting up some basic lights and, the, and um, a shadow. So just check out how much better this looks. There's a little bit of motion blur as well. No, I don't have multiple heads, Bill. I just have, um, I have his head turning pretty quickly though. I'll show you what I did in a second here. So if you notice now his exit has a lot more snap to it. There's a lot more um, exaggeration and sort of pop as he leaves. And in this section where he's looking around, I'm doing all these little subtle things to help um, loosen up his performance, and I'll show you guys what I mean when we frame through it. And just look how the textures, I mean, I'm not a TD, I'm, I'm, I'm really not very technical with that stuff, but it looks so much better with just a shadow and some lights. So just watch how he makes his head turn. This is just an example of, of adding some, um, the things I was thinking about to try and add polish to the scene. So when he turns his head here, his body's actually leading the, the turn, his chest is rotating first, his head snaps back, and then there's an overlap thing happening where his head snaps back and, and translates forward slightly and then does a really little arc to it. And then when all that stuff is happening right through here, if you look at the fan, the head fan where those fingers are over his head, watch there's a really subtle bit of, of overlap happening with him. And it's really subtle. His jaw does a tiny little adjustment. And then there's this wonderful waddle control under his neck. Look at how when he turns his neck, you can get a little bit of waddle there. Polish is one of those things where 
you don't you don't want people to see what you're doing. You want them to feel it. It just add those all those little itty bitty details where you're where you get them in there. And if someone says, "Oh man, that man that 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 waddle polish was really cool," you go, "Yeah, awesome." I'm trying to do a thing here where he's breathing as he stops. Yeah, Anastasia, that's great to hear. Yeah, so um, just trying to do add as many little areas as possible. A lot of times when I'm doing polish, I'm also just focusing on one area of the body. That's how I like to animate, actually, is I like to focus on the body first, the root, then the legs, and then the shoulders and the head. I sort of go one at a time, and I connect everything. But at the end, it's literally like right in through here, running a breathing pass, right in through here, where he's you watch his body just does a really subtle breathing thing there. The little eye darts, once again, just adding those details. And polish, I remember this, there was this great lecture I heard once where blocking a shot, what was it? It's like polish is 95% of your shot. Where blocking and getting the performance there, that's pretty easy. But the hard part is really making it feel organic and, and get that, that wonderful feeling in there where it feels real, you know? Um, and that can just take a long, long time. Um, another thing to talk about is the camera here. I was talking about the, the Cowboys and Aliens. Watch how. Um, I wanted this feeling of a camera kind of searching for him a little bit as he comes in. He goes screen right and the camera's overshooting slightly. You know, the, he, the cameraman doesn't know where he's going exactly. And so there's there's this handheld feel where he's he's looking, he's searching for him as he's as he's um uh, as Dozer's running around. And I think that adds another level of authenticity to the scene too, where the camera isn't just an A to B rotation. It's got a um sort of a life of its own. You know, the camera can be another character to your scene. And it um it also uh, it can really help to to loosen up your scene. So cool. So that that's it for that.